Hello, so welcome to everyone that is watching live or anyone that's watching this um, after it's been recorded. I'm Neve. I'm the marketing manager at Quickfire Digital and today we are talking about starting a career at the moment or changing career. So I'm coming from the perspective that I started my career quite young and in a bit of an unconventional way. Um, so talking about some personal experiences and sort of things that I've picked up along the way. So I'm going to pass over to Marie who's going to introduce herself. Hi everyone, thank you Neve. Um, my name is Marie Oakes. Um, I am a resilience and wellbeing expert and also a speaker and coach. And um, yeah, today's quite interesting, isn't it? I think that journey of, of what we put in the, the write-up for this was, you know, it's, that, it's very daunting, isn't it? You know, starting a career generally or having a new start, um, but definitely in like today's world, it's, it's a lot harder and a lot scarier, I imagine. So really going to be talking about um, I suppose two points really you know if you're looking for a job you know how can you how can we help you with that um, and build up those kind of resilient skills and, and and help you with that and then also you know if you are in a job how different that is um, and how you can deal with that because I think definitely at the, at the moment I mean I, I definitely learned on the job and I've had people to learn from and if you're not in in the, the work environment and you're not with people day to day it's very hard to learn from others and build your experience and get better. Um, I was very fortunate to do an apprenticeship um, when I was younger and kind of learnt most of what I know. And no need, you're going to talk about that as well. Um, so, yeah, we're just looking at kind of some kind of resilient skills for that. And also um, starting a new career. I started a new career in my 40s a couple of years ago. Um, and I know, Lou, you have as well. So we're both going to be kind of sharing our experiences with that, what that feels like um and uh, having the courage to do it in the first place um and kind of lessons learned along the way so yeah uh I pass over to you Lou thanks um so yes I'm Lou I am a um oh <laughs> culture and relationship coach I've forgotten what I am um or what I do rather uh, and so I'm coming um, from today from two points of view actually one of them is from um, my coaching practice and like Marie, looking at resilience and what that might look like when we're trying to plan for the long term, especially when we have no idea what's happening next week, let alone, you know, a year or five years down the line. And then the other place that I'm coming from today is a little bit more pers a little bit more personal and a little bit more academic. So I graduated in 2006. Um, and then I worked in a student's union um, for a little while and stayed in education for as long as I could. And so I went out into the workplace in 2008. Those of you who know your history or have lived through it, that was when the last recession started. Um, and so for those of you who are super nervous about um, graduating or starting a new career during a recession, there are lots of us who have lived through that. Um, and so I'm going to bring in some of my experiences um, and also my peers' experiences um, and what we've learned from that and still learning from that in some cases. Um, and so, yeah, I love the fact that we've all come from this with so many different experiences. Starting careers is something that, um, that we do. And if, if it's OK with the two of you, I'll just talk a little bit about some of those big lessons that we've learned from um, from the last recession that I'm not entirely sure that we've always grown out of. Um, so yeah, the, from the academic point of view, picking up on some of the conversations that I've had with my, um, my classmates um, and my friends um, who are a similar age to me, we really saw that and those of you who manage teams um, or support colleagues um, who are kind of in their early 30s, might pick up on some of the, the uh, behaviors that is around stability and um, talking about their worth. So much of that came from that experience of we would, you know, we graduated with this sense of identity that was uh, that work you that if you've if you've watched previous episodes, you've heard me talk quite a lot about. And then all of a sudden, that that worth that we were studying through or that we were doing apprenticeships through and not getting those opportunities, um, really struggling. And actually it's, it's really sad to see that some of my friends, um, not many luckily, um, but have really hit them in terms of their confidence of being able to 
apply for the next role up or to negotiate a salary that is more suitable for what they're doing um, and never really being able to adapt to this gig economy that we've that we've kind of find ourselves into and I'm so excited that we're going to be talking a bit more about the side hustle later on um, and so yeah that was kind of my experience um, of starting my career it was a little bit uncertain um i was supposed to i, I was going to graduate and become an academic um but i come from a poor working class background and couldn't afford it um and so i worked in retail uh so fashion retail so marie and i've geeked out over my time there um before really slowly it took a few years to really then start developing it into um, what i wanted it to be later down the line so yeah and now i'm interested to hear from from the two of you about the starts of your careers yeah i mean i'm happy to discuss so i am um, i was in a bit of a similar situation so i had gone through school thinking i'm gonna go to uni i'm gonna become i i had an idea i either wanted to own a restaurant or be a fashion designer um but yeah something very <laughs> might be interesting but i decided against both of those and i got to um when i was doing my a levels i sort of slowly realized that the idea of uni was just something that I, I think I just picked up from everyone else because everyone else was going to uni and um, so I kind of just assumed that that would be the best for me but I got to I actually got to the deadline of writing applications and I was saying to everyone oh yeah I'm, I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it and I just hadn't done anything and I was like I think I'm trying to tell myself that I don't want to go to uni um so I didn't I didn't apply I didn't look into any of them um I started looking into apprenticeships because I knew that I still wanted a bit of comfort of you know being in education and knowing that I'm still learning and I've got something to go towards um so I did I did a design apprenticeship at City College so I started working there um yeah so that gave me the freedom of earning money and having a job and feeling like you know I'm starting my career but then I was still had yeah, like I said, the comfort of knowing that I was getting a qualification and I was still, you know, I had my mentors around me and I was able to sort of develop my own skills. Um, and then I finished that. And actually, I've never thinking about it. Although I didn't go to uni, I've not yet been out of education. So I'm doing my degree now, um, but doing it part time. So I'm doing my job at Quickfire, which I absolutely adore, which I found through work experience and networking, which when you're 18, 19 is just the worst thing to be told that you have to do to go networking. And I'm sure even people that are now graduating uni are thinking, you know, networking, it just sounds horrific, which it does. And I think we could all agree that I don't think anyone actually enjoys going to networking, but that's where I met my boss um, and I did some work experience and I got on really well. Um, and then, yeah, we figured out where I could fit in in the company and I've been here ever since. And yeah, now I'm doing my, my degree part time, which is something that, although initially I didn't want to do, I didn't actually know that you could do a degree and work at the same time. But that's never something that I'd ever considered. And although it's, it's really hard work, I'm not going to lie, it's really tough doing a degree and a full time job, but it's so worth it. So yeah, that's, that's what I've done. Um, you know, a bit slightly unconventional, but it's given me the freedom to start earning money and feeling like, you know, figuring out what I want to do with my career and still have that, you know, I'm learning, I'm still going to get those qualifications and that experience at the same time. So yeah, that's how I've got to where I am. I think it's nice to know that the different options are out there, isn't mm -hmm. it? You know, I think people maybe don't even listening to this might think, oh, actually, wow, that oh, maybe I could do what Lee's done. I didn't know anything about that. Um, and I, th I think that's really important. There are different ways and you don't have to go to university. I think, I mean, I, I grew up probably in the generation where, you know, my parents didn't go to university. So it's actually quite a big thing mm. that their, you know, their sons and daughters went. Um, so I naturally, for me, I suppose my sister, my older sister went to university. So for me, it was something that I naturally wanted to do. I mean, I always want, I, I was very lucky. I think I, I always wanted to be a fashion designer since I was eight years old. I'd draw and make clothes. And as, as long as I was old enough to use a sewing machine, I'd be there creating different creations because I could never really find anything that I wanted to wear. And I always wanted to be different. And I grew up as a twin. 
So my my mum just dressed as the same. Um, so I really struggled with being known and I really wanted my own identity. So I think that's kind of where that came from, where I wanted to create clothes where I looked different. As soon as I could dye my hair differently to my sister, I did. Um, and I think, you know, fashion for me was a really big part of my own sort of self-expression and that kind of individuality. And I was thinking, wow, I'd love to be part of that as an industry and go and kind of help other people to kind of find their own identity too. So that was really my drive. And I left school at 16, went to art college and then went naturally to university because I wanted, I think I wanted to learn how to draw. I wanted to learn how to put these ideas down on paper, which I did do. Um, and, and actually, fortunately, I did a sandwich year, so I then went and worked for a fashion designer in my um, third year, like second and third year. And that came, that wasn't kind of luck. That was, you know, I worked really, really hard at uni and I was very committed and um, I was very lucky that someone had come working um, from being with Alexander McQueen and then had come to me and said, well, look, you know, there's an opportunity for you to go and work there. Actually, he's got another fashion designer friend that's looking to set up their own label. Um, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily been put forward for that if she didn't see me. She was one of my flatmates in my room every night working really, really hard and, um, you know, really committed to the course. So I was, I was fortunate to, to get that experience. And actually that for me, I spent a year with a British fashion designer. We launched during London Fashion Week. You know, we got to go to Paris, we got to go to Milan. I just think I was like 19, 20 at the time. How amazing is that? And I think I learned more in that year than I probably did on my university course. Mm -hmm. um because I was within a business I was you know under under the designer's wing you know she taught me everything that she knew she couldn't afford to pay me um so I was you know subsidizing and my parents helped me out very fortunate to, to, to spend a year in one well, nine months in London um I'm very lucky to do that and when I left university I, I had the job to go to um but it didn't necessarily come without its kind of pains and anxieties and um but I, you know, I, I kind of worked hard and that's, that's where my sort of career went to. And I, I always remember speaking to other people, you know, I'd grad, graduate university and I'd sort of meet them in a pub or something and be like, oh, you know, so what's, what's your five year plan? And they'd be like, I haven't got one. And for me, that, I was just like, what? You know, you haven't got a five year plan. That's insane. Do you not know what you want to do with your life? And I sort of had it all mapped out till I was about 30. Um, but that was just me. That was just how I, how I saw things. And I was very career driven. Um, and that I think, you know, there, there were ups and downs along the way and whether I, I did it the right way or the wrong way. Um, you know, I, as my story is very clear, you know, I, I burnt out very quickly because I was just working too hard and gave everything to my job and I wasn't setting boundaries and looking after myself. And when I look back on that, I think actually, I wish I'd have done it differently. Um, and so I've, I've probably learned life lessons definitely along, along the way. But I think there is, especially at the moment, you know, I do remember coming out of university and graduating and thinking, what's next for me? And I think there's always that limbo, isn't there, where, you know, you suddenly don't have those resources, you don't have your peers around you, you, you know, you haven't got somewhere to go every day, you haven't got that routine. And I found that it was like a six month gap for me. Really, really hard, really tough. Um, and eventually, you know, I, I I, I went to work for the, the British fashion designer and, and then my career kind of started from there. Um, but it is daunting and I, I do appreciate for people now how hard that must be, especially if, you know, you're looking for a job or you've been made redundant and you're looking for a job or you've just started a new job. Um, and I think you know, I'm, I'm quite aware that I've been talking for quite a long time, so I'm going to hand back to one of you guys. But, you know, I think that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today is, you know, how, how do you deal with that and how do you how do you handle that really? Um, I know we're going to sort of share some advice and, and top tips for that. I picked up on something um, I, and each of you had, had said something that I just wanted to, to ask about and explore with you. Um, Neve, you used the, the phrase still being able to still figure out what you wanted to do by being able to work and study at the same time. Mm -hmm. And Marie, you used the term, um, you wasn't sure if there's a right way or a wrong way. So the question that I have for both of you is, is there a right way and a wrong way? And how do you know when you figured it out? I think I'll, I'll go first if you don't mind, Marie. Um, I think for me, because, I mean, I talk about it all the time, but because I did literally start my career at 
sort of 18, 19, I kind of just assumed that everyone knew what they wanted to do. And I just had to really quickly figure it out because it felt like, you know, all these people that I was working with in my first job, I've always actually been quite lucky that throughout, you know, any jobs that I've had, I've worked with people that are my age and sort of doing the similar kind of thing, just because of the industry that I've been in, I've always been in sort of the creative and digital marketing side. Um, yeah, so I have been really lucky to be surrounded by people that are also still figuring it out. But I think it's just, so when I actually started at Quickfire, I was a designer because I did, I'd done a design apprenticeship. Um, yeah, and I was a designer and then, you know, I sort of did that for a little while and I just spoke to my bosses and thought, you know, can I explore some different types of things? And I was just really honest with them and said, look, I don't, I don't really know what I want to do full time. You know, I'll take literally any opportunity you put in front of me because I just, I just want to, you know, see what I'm best at. And when I started my degree, I started, so it's a management degree, um, but it allows me to cover so many different topics that I didn't even know that I could be, that could fit inside a job role, if that makes sense. So like things like this, for example, like talking about well-being and looking after the team, like that's never something that I thought when I was younger, like, oh, that'll be my job one day. So I think it's just, I don't think, for me, there's definitely not a right or wrong way. I mean, I've changed my, my role this year even just because I figured out, you know, different areas in the company I can fit. And I'm really lucky that I've got a company that allows me to do that and actually really encourages it as well. You know, if I've got new ideas or some, I want to do something that's slightly outside of my role, then that's never been an issue, which I know that not everyone will have the opportunity to do. But I think that curiosity in me has been a real, real benefit because it means even if, you know, I've, I've had to over COVID, for example, when, you know, people went on furlough, I had to pick certain roles and responsibilities up like everyone that stayed on working throughout that period would have done but because I've always been quite curious and quite interested in sort of figuring out what different um, responsibilities I can have that that came in really helpful because I, I saw it as a challenge rather than you know something that I resented so yeah I've definitely I mean I, I've not figured it out yet I mean we're still I don't think anyone's truly figured out what they you know what they're completely passionate about but it's just finding something for me it's finding what motivates me and what I know I can be good at so yeah I don't think there is a right or wrong way I think if anyone tells you that there is they're just saying it it's different for every single person no one's you know going to do the same thing yeah so no I don't think there is a right or wrong way and I don't sorry I will stop talking in a second but I don't think for me that I will ever because I have got that curious side of me I don't think I'll ever say this is it this is what I'm doing forever because I always want to explore but I know that there are people that have and there are people you know my age that have already gone yeah this is what I'm doing this is what I want to do for the rest of my life which is amazing thanks me what about you Marie yeah it's, it's very interesting I love what Neve just said and I think that having that curiosity is really important isn't it I think for me I don't, again, I don't think there is a right or wrong way. I've just worked out how to do it differently. Um, and I think, you know, in, in two senses, from, from a, a learning perspective from my profession, I think, you know, spending a year with a fashion design was the best thing that I ever did. And I learned so much from that. So actually going to university um, is not always essential. Um, I shouldn't say that because I do work very closely with universities. Um, I think one good thing about it is that you do learn a lot about yourself and you learn mm -hmm. about living away from home and time management. And, you know, and actually from, from, a, from a creative point of view, you do work out your signature. You have time to kind of work out what your signature style is and who you want to work with and, and that kind of thing. So I think that time is, is very valuable. I'm not saying that you can't then actually work that out when you're working with a fashion designer. Um, so I think, you know, there are, I think, you know, look at different opportunities, look at different ways. You know, I, I was saying earlier on the call, you know, there are quite a lot of fashion students, you know, that are setting up their own businesses, whether that is 
having you know selling stuff on depop or ebay or you know making stuff and selling it um you know start small there's that real entrepreneurial spirit i think at the moment which is just so brilliant to see you know it, it's it's unconventional and it's unorthodox something i always used to get told when i was at uni very unorthodox but i quite liked that because i was different and again that sort of curiosity and trying to challenge things and go well actually i don't want to do it like that what if i do it like this and i think we really need that in life and we need those kind of life skills and and that's really, really important. From from a well-being point of view, I wish I'd have done it differently. Um, and I but I didn't know what I know now. And mm-hmm. I think what I do a lot and the work that I do now is, you know, I, I work with, with people, I work with creators to help them excel without burning out. And I think that's really important to kind of know what, know what you can handle and know what your limit is and what your boundaries are. And I never had that. And I went into a culture at the time where nobody else really did either you know you're working 24 7 and so I was probably in the wrong job or in the wrong company because the culture wasn't great they were allowing us all to kind of work like that and it was literally burnout and I think I learned a lot about how I can be creative better by looking after myself um so I have learned a lot of lessons so I don't know if there's a right or wrong way um I think awareness for me is is a lot um and I think getting in early with, with maybe at school or with education or teaching on universities, is it about that awareness of how you see things and that self-confidence and, you know, just knowing how to look after yourself and how to say no and how to say yes to the right things and no to the right things. And, you know, I'm really passionate about all of that because I think that then in the end makes you and enables you to pick the right way. What about yourself, Lou? Um, throwing the question back to you. you <laughs> um so i i don't think there's a wrong way or a right way um for those of you who are more familiar with my coaching practices you'll know that it it's only your way um and when it's when it becomes really difficult is when you start off uh, you started off on this chapter of your life um and part way through you realize that actually the road that you've been on isn't hasn't been your way at all um and i think in in a couple of a couple of episodes back i talked about um the the end of my marriage and choosing you know choosing work over my family and for me that was me acknowledging that i was following a script that i was given um that i kind of just followed along with rather than own it um and so yeah there's something that is around that self-awareness you're talking about marie that i think is really important um and as you were both speaking there was this um i i heard an old voice come back it's been a really long time since i've heard it um which is uh that i'm a bit of a jack of all trades and when i was younger that for me it felt like a really bad thing So knowing that um, my original um, course after graduating was to become an academic, like they're seen as as specialists. Um, And I was the type of person who just never knew what I wanted to do. Um, I changed my degree twice. Yeah, twice. So I had three different degree titles in the three years that I did it. Um, Because I was just like, philosophy looks great. Let's do that um and just trying stuff out like you were saying Neve and so that curiosity um and so there was this there was this resentment that we we idolize experts we idolize specialists um and I think it's just about working out who you are and so um I've learned to embrace this generalist um attitude for me because for me it, it, it provides more joy um, that curiosity. I'm just a bit nosy about lots of different things. And so um, way back in the day, earlier in my career, I would stand there and I would be working with students um, who are looking to apply to university or um, or an apprenticeship and they're trying to work out what they're doing. And one of the first questions that I would ask is like, who knows what they want to do um, when they grow up? Or no, who doesn't know what they want to do when they all grew up? And I would be there with my hand up with the rest of the class. because I, I have no idea. And um, I think when I set up my own practice a year ago, it was the first time that I was like, 
yeah, I wanted this and I worked for this and this is exactly where I am and this is where I want to be. Everything prior to that, um, I just described as a bit of an accident. I fell into jobs um, and, you know, they came up and I was just like, that looks great. And it fits my, for, for me, it was about, what well, does it fit my value? So I guess from a practical point, um, when, if you're a generalist and you're not quite sure where to go, it's that anchor, it's that self anchor. So I only really took jobs that excited me, that I got to work with people and their progression um, and that I could do some cool stuff and I wasn't doing the same thing all the time because then I would get bored because I was a generalist and I liked running around um and yeah it's about finding your way so for me being able to work out what my different work identities were meant that I was able to find yeah find or fall into but also to be able to spot opportunities for those jobs where I could shape or could be a bit more flexible and so yeah I think it's it's knowing it's knowing what you want um and not like the big what you want like because that changes, right? I remember. It, I remember. Um, I had just left university, so I'd moved to London to start my ma my masters the first time round. Um, and I was at the train station, and I saw um, a senior member of university staff from the university that I just left, and we were kind of friendly terms. Um, and they were quite like discombobulated and a little bit like grumpy it wasn't new for me because he was always grumpy um I doubt he's watching this I'm not going to out him but if he sees this he knows who I'm talking about um and actually what turns out was that he was on his way back from a job interview and he was so angry because um in the interview they said to him you've been in your role forever like why are you applying for a different role um and you know he said that he was up for a new challenge and so on and so forth and they basically the impression that he got was they weren't interested in him because he didn't have any movement that he'd just been with the same institution for years on end and so in in quite an angry place <laughs> he was kind of teaching me a lesson by going don't stick in a job for too long because nobody re will reward you for it anymore and i managed to kind of ex i managed to take away the positives of that without taking on his angst at the time which was you just never know and so make up your own rules, do your own thing. And I think especially when we're, if you're, you know, if you're at the point where you're starting a new career, um, you know, whatever your past was, knowing that things can change and you can control that to some extent, you can influence that. It just liberates you a little bit from this stress of following a script that maybe you didn't give yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's something at the moment as well that is going to be vital to everyone, no matter what career you're in, is that embracing change. Because like I said, like for people that were on furlough, that was a massive change. For people that have lost their jobs or are now looking for new jobs or people that have decided that the role they're in, like you said, it just isn't for them. It's not actually what they're, they're passionate about. It's that embracing change. And that on the, that's that sort of, need to do that is both on the individual people but the companies as well so you know accepting that some people are going to want to move on and that's not necessarily you know because of how you treated them or what you know what the company stands for it's just because people have had some time to figure out actually you know this just isn't what I'm passionate about this isn't you know if you get those Sunday blues people are starting to realize that and I think at the moment with people now going into their career as well. Like you said, Lee, that, that sort of five-year plan is probably going to look very different now. And that's not, you know, that's not your fault. That's not because you've done anything wrong. It's just because you're entering your career at a pretty shitty time, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think people need to, yeah, definitely embrace that change. So when just a question for both of you because I've, I've never personally been through it but when you sort of found yourself um and probably more aimed at Lou 
you know, falling into these jobs and, you know, sort of just applying because you, you know, you think they look a bit interesting or maybe they were, you know, the next logical step in your career. Did you find that it was quite demotivating because you just, you never sort of, did you still feel passionate in the jobs you were doing, even though, you know, you hadn't decided that that was necessarily exactly what you wanted to do? Like, were you still able to sort of motivate yourself and give your whole to something that not wasn't necessarily what you were completely passionate about? Yeah, so... So I guess the the how the reason why I feel like I fell into my jobs was um, for the most part I was never looking, um, never actively looking. Um, so a a friend of mine had this running joke um, that I, it must be time for me to start a new job soon because it's been about two years, um, and it just it was never that I was unhappy. Um, so the first, so one of, so one of the first jobs that I left, well, the first job that I left was, um, the end of my contract. And then after that, it was cause I was moving. So like, you know, life happened and then redundancy happened. And then that the burnout, burnout number two happened that affected my job. Um, but in terms of when a new opportunity came, it was, this job came up and it looks great for you. Somebody had gone like, here's a new shiny thing. Um, what was really interesting though, was that I would always, when I, when I was managing staff, I would always say to them um, in the most kind of HR friendly way was, I don't want you to be here in two years doing the same job um, because I want you to learn and I want you to try stuff out. And, you know, I want you to, to, progress and do the thing that you want to do and that is likely to change in two years time um, and so maybe without realizing it that's what I was doing um, but I think yeah if at any point I kind of felt like it was getting too much um, especially when it came to my mental health then it was probably a good time to to check out like I said old Lou past Lou not really good at um, not really good at looking after her mental health so for me, that was a, a big chapter for it, but it was always being able to find a job that, um, well, that somebody would be able to kind of wave under my nose and go, you might be good for this. And most of the time it was give it a go and we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I've, I think the only exception was when I took on a role that was maternity cover. Um, and I thought, right, this is great because I know now in a year's time, <laughs> I've got a plan <laughs> rather than accidentally leaving a, a job um, that I enjoyed. I don't know if that answered your question, Neve. I'm sure Marie will do a better job of, of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I thought I thought it was brilliant, Lou, because I think I've never been in that situation where I've, I suppose, done a job because I didn't want to do a job, if that makes sense. I always, always like, I want to be a fashion designer and that's where I want to go. Um, but actually interesting for me, I think looking back, you know, even when I was a kid, I just wanted to help people. I wanted people to feel better about themselves and I wanted people to have more confidence and have their own identity. And actually, bizarrely, I've, I thought that was potentially being a you know, fashion designer and helping people in that way. But realizing kind of going on this journey is now that actually I can do it in a different way, um, which is what I'm doing now. So I think that's quite nice. Um, and I can do that very authentically authentically um and never say never from the fashion point of view but so i think that's that taken me a while to get there so i think you know that the message goes out there that even if you've chosen to do one thing doesn't mean to say you're going to end up doing that thing forever because actually doing that one thing you might then go off on a different tangent i think it's giving yourself that chance and giving yourself the opportunity to try it in the first place and take that risk um and try new things um and I, and I think also is just to add to that, I think, and what people might be going through now is when you realize that you don't want to do it anymore. I think that's, that's a tough place to find yourself. It's an exciting place to find yourself, but it's a tough place to, to find yourself. You know, I realized that you know, I didn't want to be in the fashion industry anymore. It wasn't that I didn't love it. It's just like, it was too intoxicating for me and I, I couldn't, how I was and how I was treating myself and how I was, I, I couldn't be in that environment. I needed to kind of go away and put myself back in. Um, 
but actually there'll be people now thinking do you know what i don't want to do this job i want to start a new career or i want to do something completely different um and how do you do that and i think actually sometimes you go through a little bit of a grieving process like i did i was like you know i've I've wanted to be in fashion since I was eight years old, you know, there's that grieving process that you're leaving something behind. But also there is that excitement of, you know, look, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to do something different and something that maybe is more me. It's more authentic. It's something that I'm really good at. Um, and to just go for it. And I think that's, you know, I definitely had, you know, starting my own business. I know you started your practice last year. I started my business about two years ago. You know, just, the, 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 I still have it you know the self-doubt you know am I good enough are people going to listen to what I've got to say and you know why me and I think anybody has probably has that when they're, they're starting their own business um but I think with that you know once you know why you're doing it I mean my biggest reason I get up in the morning is because of the people that I'm helping and the people that potentially can help and that's my biggest drive you know that's you know makes me you know ju not jump out of bed some mornings but you know that's that's my drive and that's my motivation and that's my purpose and I'm so lucky that I have that and I found that and I've gone on a long journey to get there and I think that's the key thing and I think sometimes people want to try something different but they don't know what they want to do and I think it basically is thinking like what what could I do if I didn't get paid to do what do I absolutely love doing and if that's helping people or it's caring for people or baking cakes or you know doing whatever you can start a business out of that and you can do something different I think I think what this time has shown a lot of us is we have gone through change and we have maybe coped with it better than we thought we might have coped with it um some of us you know I know I've really struggled in, in certain times and certain days have been better than others but I do I'm taking from it that you know I that on that reflection that you know I know I'm stronger than I was six months ago I think a lot of people probably feel like that as well um and if you can get through that you can kind of get through anything so I think from you know just give yourself some space and some time and and think right well, okay well what is it that I really want to do and if that is starting your own business or it's starting a new career then then absolutely go for it have I know that so obviously you just mentioned that Leah, you started your practice a year ago now as well. Yeah. So when you were sort of getting to that stage, because I'm, at, it wasn't a short process deciding that you wanted to take that jump. And obviously, I've never done it before. So coming from a bit of curiosity as well. What were the things that you went through? I mean, obviously, you need to sort of figure out the literal logistics of setting up a business. But that that's a massive step, right? Going into not knowing, you know, what your next paycheck looks like, just general stuff that you lose when you leave, you know, a nine to five business, um, you know, when you're working for someone else. So I imagine that takes a lot of, well, like you said, like believing in yourself and, you know, trusting that what you're putting out there, people are going to want and people are going to, um, yeah, want to work with you. So I guess, was there anything that you found yourself sort of going through or having to sort of tell yourself was was there anything that you noticed that i'm just curious to see if both of you went through any of the same sort of thought process in trying to build up to that stage or was it you just sort of knew one day that this is what you're sort of destined to do if that makes sense go on marie <laughs> I, I think um i thought you were gonna go first i was gonna think about my answer um so i think um I think you do get to a point. I definitely, um, I think I was working at Topshop at the time and, and I, I was very, you know, quite a few years into my recovery and I was feeling a lot better and I was like, you know, I really want to do something. I really want to have my own business, but I wasn't quite sure what that looked like. Always knew from a young age that I wanted to have my own business. Um, just because I come from, you know, my dad was an entrepreneur and you know, that kind of ethic, work ethic and things like that. Um, and it, when I thought it was just working out that's what I wanted to do and, and I suppose it, there's a lot of thought. I mean, you know, I started my business two years ago, but there was literally three, four years of planning and am I going to do this and how do I do this and what do I need to do? What does that look like? What, what am I going to offer? So I think, you know, there's, there is a lot of background stuff um, that has to go into it. You can't suddenly just one day and go, right, I'm going to set my business up. I'm going to leave my job. There is a lot of planning behind that. And I think the more planning that you do, the better it is. Um, but I definitely, it was, I suppose it, it took me a lot longer than I thought it would take 
to, if I'm, if I'm brutally honest, um, because it was, you know, I had to basically start again. I was starting again with, with new network of people, new promotion of what I was doing. Still wasn't quite sure what it is, what it was, was what I was doing. Um, I was still testing and landing things in different audiences and seeing, seeing what landed well and what didn't and, and, and asking the question, you know, I think sometimes we can, I know that very well from being a fashion designer where you put products out there that you think people want. And actually that's why you end up with, you know, so much stock in stores because people don't actually want it. So I actually reversed that kind of mindset and thinking, went out and asked people and said, look, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. You're struggling with this. What would help you? How can I help you? And that's really how I, how I started. And I went and had those honest conversations with people and worked out and said, okay, well, look, that's what people need. What can I do to then provide that? And I think that was probably the biggest lesson for me. Um, but the, the, I think the biggest thing is, is that self-belief. And I don't know if Lou's going to say that or not, is, you know, it's so different to put that value on yourself especially if you're charging yourself. I mean, I'm more in the knowledge economy. So, you know, people pay for my time and my knowledge and my experience and my, my guidance and help and support. Um, so I think that was something that I really, really struggled with. Um, but I think the more you do it and the more that you help people, the more you become comfortable with it, I suppose, in the sense that, you know, you know, it's doing good and you get lots of lovely feedback and, and you know, people, you can change people's lives and things like that. So I think that's, I think the more you do it, the more feedback you get and the more you go, do you know what? I, I, I need to be doing this and this is the right thing to do. Um, but there isn't, like I was saying before this call, there wasn't days where I suddenly think, oh, why, why am I doing it? You know, it's like, oh, it's too hard. You know, I'm going to go and get a proper job. I'm going to go and get a nine to five. And, but it, it does take work and it does take commitment. But I think there's an enormous amount of focus and clarity that you, you have to have. I think it's very easy to go off on a tangent with your business and go, well, I'm going to do this, this and this. I've got this really great book called one, the one thing by um, Gary Keller. And it talks about just focusing on one thing for 90 days, just focus on one thing. And that's really what I did. If it didn't work, try the next thing. And that's really what that became my kind of marketing strategy really. Um, and, and fortunately, you know, those one or two things have, have landed and, you know, um, it's working, but yeah, I, th I think it's, um, a lot of sort of learning lessons on the way but actually not being afraid to ask for help as well you know I reached out to people that are doing something similar um said you know how are you doing this I think sometimes it can be a real closed book in business there's so many lovely people out there that will share their knowledge with you and what they're charging and what their fees are and you know how they've got to where they've got to um there's an enormous amount of people that, that are there to help you know and I do the same I mentor people and I coach people and pass that knowledge on and share that knowledge um but yeah it definitely it can be quite lonely as well. Um, so finding a really great network of people to support you or have ideas to bounce off of you. I have, I'm part of a few mastermind um, that I do um, once a month, um, which is brilliant. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of things that go into it, but um, yeah, it, it is definitely worth it. On some days it doesn't necessarily feel like it. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my advice for people. What about you, Lee? Uh, I absolutely so much of what you said in that last part I completely agree with um, in terms of my own experience Marie I was the opposite <laughs> um, so I was coming out of a um, a couple of months for uh, of a mental health break um, I really needed to look after myself I wasn't in a good way um, and so as I was re-emerging um, I'd started to kind of look at jobs and and I don't really a friend I, 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 so I was I was interested in coaching I'd implemented a coaching culture in my last role um, and a friend of mine was going away for a two-day course for coaching um, and I, I was kind of playing around with it like maybe that's something I want to do and so I went and I came out of it and I went, right, okay, great. So within the next couple of weeks, I'd registered for a business. I registered for, um, a, you know, how to set up an own business course um, locally. I'd signed up for a master's um, and just went, okay, I came home and I told my other half, this is what I was going to do. And he just kind of went, you've had lots of ideas in the last like two months how do we know this is going to happen? It's like, because I've signed up for all of these things and like, it feels right. It fits. 
um and i can't tell you what it was it was just a bit of intuition um now you can kind of see where my previous statements of i fell into it um <laughs> came from but it was very much uh this feels right in in my head my heart my gut um i have no I don't have a single entrepreneurial bone in my body. Um, my parents, uh, so I grew up in my, you know, my parents had businesses um, and they worked really hard. Their story for me was always go to university, work hard, don't, you know, don't live the life that, that we do where we're working all of the time. Um, and so, yeah, for me, it was just always, I'm going to do great things in, in other people's companies and businesses. At no point did I ever think that I was, I was going to do it um but a big part of um a big part of particularly my more recent experiences was the way the way things are happening in the environments that i've been in um they're not working and none of the jobs that I've, i'm finding are able to do the things that i wanted to do so it was it was the first time that happened to me where i go there's lots of incredible work out there, but I don't fit in any of them. And so just went, right, okay, I'm doing this now then and threw myself into it. And I tell you what, if it had been this year, knowing what I know now, I don't think I would have just been so like, <laughs> just all in two feet first go. Um, because you're right. It's so much work. And I knew that it would be, um, but all of those things that you that you said, Marie, that that helps, particularly on those days where it's really hard, like meeting incredible people and having a network again, that constant curiosity. So I'm, I'm not really shy when it comes to like, there's a thing I don't know how to do. Who do you speak to about this and how did you learn? And like, just tell me everything and then I can work out whether I can do it or if I need to earn enough to help like get some help in to help me do that but I'll give it a, like I'll give it a go really um you know I was like I've been a senior manager I've managed budgets I've managed people it's all good running your own business where you were completely um you know you're completely accountable um that's really really big but I tell you what it taught me the it it finally taught me this lesson that it took me a lifetime to learn which was I'm my most important resource. I need to look after myself. Otherwise I can't see clients. I can't do the work that I do. I won't put food on the table. And so, yeah, I, I'm grateful every day that I have my practice and, uh, and that I gave myself permission because I'm doing my master's at the same time. Um, I, just I needed to make sure that I wasn't going to burn myself out and so that whole first year of a business I basically just extended it and doubled it it's like right I'm going to do all of my learning in the first two years um and you know I'm still working it out and do you know what I probably will always be working it out because things will change the you know the business will evolve hopefully um and you know and the work's already changed my practice has already changed um in that space of a year um but i i love i love that i created this playground where i get to write my own rules and i am responsible for them there's something very there's something very special about that oh, sorry neve i'll just uh, there was something very special about creating your own rules and creating your own business and, and that freedom that you have um is, is 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 brilliant isn't it in in that sense and, and i think actually for me you know definitely i think working for myself i am more able to protect my look after my well-being and, and make sure that i'm doing okay um than maybe you know working within within a business and and following those kind of rules and regulations but um but yeah no well done i think that's great i think it's brilliant lou um that you've gone on that journey and i think i i, rem I can remember back to days where when I first started my business, um, my dad was like my financial advisor. My <laughs> mum was like my PA. <laughs> and we'd go out for a staff Christmas party, like the three of us. Um, but, you know, just pulling them in and like helping out and stuff. And, you know, that's, that's the, ni the nice thing of, um, of, of it. You know, people are willing to help out and, and people are really supportive, aren't they? People are really supportive. And, 
you know you're trying something new and 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 wanting to sort of help you out so you know i think the support definitely in, in norfolk and norwich and and you know further afield is is, is is brilliant you know there's there are there's so many so much for support i was saying this earlier for sort of startups and new careers and funding and grants and things like that available because i think you know people are going that way i think you know if they want to create their own rules and look after themselves and i don't know have have i suppose you, the one thing i like as well is that you're kind of i suppose you're uncapping that that glass ceiling aren't you of um what you can do and what you can earn and and and, and choosing who who you work with as well i suppose is, is the, a nice part of it as well and uh, the luxury i suppose of it if you know when you're doing you're doing well um so yeah I asked you both that question because I had the feeling that you might have come from slightly different perspectives when sort of making that decision, which, yeah, it looks like you did. But I also wanted to go over it because I think it's really important to talk about doing that and taking that step and, you know, having courage in yourself and realising that it's what you want, but also the fact that not everyone is going to eventually have that realisation. Not everyone is going to start a business. I think that's something that sometimes people think, you know, they they get to a certain stage in their career and they think, oh, well, you know, is this what I'm supposed to do? Or they, they can't quite figure out where they fit in in other businesses and they just assume that that's what they need to do. And whilst it's worked amazingly for both of you and so many people, not everyone is going to start their own business. Not everyone's going to enjoy starting their own business as well. And I think that's something that, I know I've spoken about it before in other um in previous episodes but with sort of my peers and sort of generation that I'm in I noticed that a lot that people think you know you've got to be your own CEO and you've got to have all these different side hustles and which is great and it really does work for some people but actually sometimes just figuring out where you want to fit in someone else's business can be just as powerful as figuring out what that business is so I think actually you know, if some people are going to come to a crossroads where it's, well, do I start looking for a job somewhere else or do I make, you know, make my own playground? Like you said, Lee, which I love that expression. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's really important to talk about as well. That not everyone, you know, is going to get to that stage. And if you do get to that stage, it's not going to be at the same point of your career either. You know, some people never work a day in their life for someone else because they, you know, they come out of school or they come out of uni and they decide, you know, actually, I'm just going to go for it. But yeah, I think it's really important that people realise that not everyone is going to have that that moment where you know they figure out that that's exact like they want to start their own business, and that's completely okay as well. You know, we can't not everyone can start our own businesses. Otherwise, there's no one to work for them. So yeah, I just wanted to to touch upon that as well. And I, th- I, I think. Yeah, you're right. You know, it, it's not for everybody, and actually, you can add so much value to someone else's business. Mm-hmm. Um, and and actually, you know, it can become your own business in your in your own mindset, in the sense, you know, because you're all working for the same vision, and you know, you want it to be successful. And I think, you know, that's sounds like you know, at Quickfly, you you have all of that encompassed with, you know, you're all on the same page. You know what 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 the vision is and where you want to go and your values and things like that and I think that's so lovely and I think it is you know I always say that to to people when they're first starting out or even when they're changing career is is look for a business like that and ask those questions at interview you know go on their website see what they're talking about how they talk about their their clients or how they talk about their staff what how do they look after their staff I think that's so important now for you to be able to fit into you know find your fit within within an organization and within within the business and you you know you can be very very successful very very successful with that um but it is you know i remember times you know i remember when i was going for an interview um one was for mulberry and one was for burberry and i remember and i've I've probably told this story before where i sat in both of them and i was just like please like me please like me i said anything that i they wanted me to hear um because I wanted to go and work for that business. Um, I never at any point did I take a step back and go, well, is this work for me? What are their values? How about, you know, I investigated into the business and I love what they were doing, but, you know, I probably didn't do enough research, you know, well, what's in it for me? You know, what, what, what am I going to get from it? What is my learning? What is my development? You know, go and speak to people that work there already. What's it like to actually work here? Um, to check that out because that's so important and for you to be able to grow and develop in that business all of that will be so relevant and so necessary so that's that's a real key thing to 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 go out and, and do I think that's so important if you're job searching 
in this current climate as well because that was definitely something that was exploited for for my peers um you know so people who who actually graduated during recession as opposed to me starting um my career at the start um was just the amount of unpaid internships that they were having to do just to get the experience um and i think there are just so many employers that because they're struggling because you know they're worried about so many other things um, and unfortunately in some cases their culture just isn't up to scratch yet um, they implicitly or explicitly e exploit new staff um, and so it's so much in your interest I know, I know it's scary I know that not having a job is terrifying um, what's even more terrifying is having to be signed off because of stress um and feeling like you're not worth anything um or that you're not worth the value that you are and that you can bring um and we've said it a few times in this episode we've talked about um finding the right fit um both of you will know i'm doing i've been doing a lot of work over this summer around allyship and inclusion and diversity in, in workplaces and communities and it's about the culture that you can like what do you add to that culture what's missing um and is this the type of place that will welcome that welcome that challenge to be better to do better um and what is it that you you bring into those spaces because actually during this time when it's so competitive to find jobs all of that unconscious bias can kick in because everyone they've got their pick which is why you know i, I was i was um, when we were talking beforehand the last time i was recruiting for a role in my old job which was an entry level role we were having you know people with phds and masters applying for an 18 grand a year job um like it's so competitive and it's so easy to erode your sense of self-confidence and self-belief. And if you're going to get through, like you will get through this, but in order to do that, you have to make sure that you look after yourself and whether that's starting your own business or finding, finding that right fit, just look after yourself because a it's really hard <laughs> like it, it, it's that quick win versus that long-term um thing and quick wins are fine as long as you know that they are quick wins um and that you're not going to be there because then you know that you don't invest the same amount of energy it's that self-awareness of, of what you're of what you're doing so yeah sorry i got onto my <laughs> no, please not... be kind to yourself <laughs> No, but that's essentially what you know this whole series and this whole this episode especially is about is knowing that where you fit within all these changes and everything that's going on at the moment it's making sure that actually if you look after yourself and you know you you understand your self-worth then you'll get through it it might it will be tough you know at the moment if you're looking for a job or you know, if you're just graduating and you're not sure, it is going to be tough. But as long as you have that self-worth and that trust in yourself, you'll figure out a way to get through it. Like you said, whether that's starting your own company or trying to find somewhere that you really fit in or, you know, going back to school, doing more education. You know, some people are destined to be in education and that's that's perfectly, you know, that's a that's a good route to go down. So, yeah, it's just that that trusting in yourself I think that's something that is really interesting that you said though about people that graduated you know people with like PhDs applying for entry-level jobs because of the environment around them but I also noticed that in people that haven't got degrees so they still think you know you know if I'm up against someone that's got a degree in this specific subject oh well they're going to get it so I may not even apply but it's that sometimes experience is just as good as that that knowledge so it, yeah it's that knowing what what you bring to the company it's not just you know what's written down on a piece of paper on your cv it's, it's what you actually bring so yeah marie unless you've got anything to add i think that's a really nice place to stop actually after after lose brilliant advice yeah no that's fine that's brilliant i love it perfect so thank you so much to everyone that 
um, watch live and to anyone that is watching this at some point in the future, um, in a second, a screen will pop up with an email address that you can, um, you can email to contact us about anything that's come up in this episode or any of our previous episodes or if there's anything that you'd like us to discuss in the future. So yeah, we, we look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next week. Thanks guys. Bye. 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 Bye.